Today we're going to continue to color our calico corn. Now as a reminder, we talked last time about value and how that shows the difference between lights and darks in an art project. So we were using a dark value on the edge of our corn kernels and then as we got closer to the center, we were lightening the pressure of our coloring so that our value was fading into light. So we are coloring hard all around the edge and it might be a little easier for you if you turn your paper as you go, as you color each piece. So you're pushing hard at the edge and you can kind of curve your coloring lines to do some contour shading so that the corn kernel actually looks rounded and three-dimensional, just like they are in real life. And of course, using these different values, these darks and lights, make the corn look like it's shiny, just like it is in real life. Each kernel has like a little highlight on it. And that highlight should end up looking like a white oval left over in the center of each kernel. And then I always kind of go back and make sure that my coloring looks even. I don't want to be able to see any scribbly pencil lines. It should just look like a smooth area of color. I'm making sure that this ends up looking like an oval. There we go. Now this kind of takes a little while to color each of these the correct way. So we have been really busy with this and we'll probably be really busy with this part today as well. However, we're kind of adding a little bit of an extra step we're going to be adding a surprise color to each kernel. So we're going to be using analogous colors today. Analogous colors are colors that are neighbors on the color wheel. So on each kernel, we're going to pick an analogous color to blend in to that kernel. So on the one I just did, I picked orange. So the analogous colors for orange are going to be yellow, orange, and yellow and red, orange, and red. It would not be these colors across from orange on the color wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick an analogous color for orange, and I've picked yellow, and I'm going to blend in a little bit of this surprise color into the kernel. So I'm just kind of doing the same thing. I'm coloring hard on the edge, and then a little lighter in the middle. And you can either do it on half of the kernel or you can kind of do it on the whole thing, more than half if you would like. And what this does, it just makes the color a little more beautiful when you blend these analogous colors together and a little more realistic. Nothing in life is really just one plain color, especially things in nature. So when you look closely at these objects, you'll see that they do have a little bit of extra surprise colors in them. So we as artists are bringing that out in our artwork as well. So I'm just gonna keep on going, doing my value shading and adding surprise colors until all of my corn is colored in. Once we've finished coloring each kernel and adding an analogous color to each kernel, we are going to start working on the husk of the corn. So that's that little part of the brown leaves that we see on the sides. I'm going to draw two husk leaves on mine and I'm just going to start over here to the right of my corn and I'm just going to kind of draw a graceful line that sort of then bumps into my corn cob and then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. So start down here and draw another graceful line that kind of bumps into the other one. Now we are going to be using a different color scheme for the husk. We're going to be using neutral colors for the husk. So neutral is like all these beautiful browns and tans and sometimes even blacks and things like that um, that we sometimes don't think about as being beautiful colors, but really they are, especially in the fall. We really want to highlight some of these different colors that we don't really use every day. So I'm just gonna use a variety of these colors to create some contour lines that sort of follow the path of my graceful line that I've already made. So basically, I'm just coloring in with lines. 
And the reason that I'm doing this is because when you look closely at a corn husk, it actually has these lines in it. It sort of makes it look like the realistic texture of that corn husk. So I'm just gonna keep on going with lots of different colors of brown and tan until there's hardly any white left in the corn husk. So now my first corn husk is all filled in. Notice how all my lines are following that same curve of my original pencil line. There's still a little bit of white left, but not too much. Now for the second one, I'm gonna start it off a little bit different. I want this to look like the top husk is overlapping the bottom husk. So I'm gonna start by putting a little shadow underneath. So I'm actually gonna use a black Sharpie. And black is also a neutral color. And I'm gonna start my lines off with this dark black to make it look like a shadow. And then I'm gonna take my brown colors and do the exact same thing as I did before. Filling it in with lines that are all going in the same direction of that contour. After you've finished your husk, double check your work to make sure that you didn't miss anything. And after you've double checked, then your work is complete.